All right, so everyone's been kind of asking for some sort of tutorial for how to make onward maps. So I guess I'm just going to go through the process that I do. It's not perfect. I mean, we're all learning, but this is basically how I make maps. We start with Unity. We open it up. Make sure you have the proper Unity 4.2. You click New Project. Uh, you call it whatever you want. <clears throat> tutorial map uh, leave all this fine you want your organization to be you so you know when you submit it and basically it'll have your name on it uh, you can click here if you have asset packages but we won't do that because I guess we're gonna go from the perspective that you're completely new that's just if you've done this before and you know what you're adding so we're just gonna click create project and it's just gonna roll Give it a few minutes. Now there is a bit of waiting in the beginning, especially when you start importing assets. Um, some things I'd almost consider are required as um, purchases from the asset store, which I know sucks. You're not getting paid for this and it sucks to make money or pay money for it, but it'll save you days of your life. Um, and it'll, it'll make it a lot easier to do the lighting too. But we'll get to that. So here we are. Uh, simple screen. No night mode on. So just this is what you're going to see if you have a base Unity. Uh, you go to the lighting. The first thing you do is go down and turn off this auto generate. Basically, this well, if you leave this on and you start placing stuff, the computer is going to slow down and it's going to start generating lighting while you're making stuff. And I remember when I first tried to make a map and it was generating lighting for the first two hours and it's really hard to move stuff smoothly while your computer's being used to make bake lighting. So you just want to turn off that lighting for now. We're not going to do any of that. Um, we can worry about the lighting settings later, but for the most part, just as a broad overview, make sure this is on Enlighten if you're going to be using this. Um, we'll leave the light map size down to 2K. And textiles down to three, just so you can get some quicker bakes. And because you're going to be basically bug testing your bakes and trying to fix errors, uh, don't go off of skybox. Go off of gradient or color. I I like color for uh, some maps, but gradient or color really. The skybox can produce some interesting results color-wise, especially if you're baking lighting. Um, but we're actually going to talk about another program that's better than Unity's default lighting. Uh, in a little bit. So we're just going to get to the beginning. These, I basically start creating empties. And we're just going to create about, I don't know, three or four of them. Actually, not many of them, three. And we're just going to go and call one of these props. We're going to put everything in there that's like a building, cover, you name it, that's just stuff on top of the terrain. That's going to be a prop. Um, everything but, I think, trees we want to sort of put in their own folder but um then we're gonna have onward stuff and then we're gonna have i call it scene but it's just stuff for the scene essentially you take the main camera the directional light and you throw that into scene um you use them like folders they're basically objects you can move things around if you click the main folder like you see you're moving the sun and the camera at the same time at the same rate at the same ratio and that's because you're clicking scene but if you click main camera you can move it on your own blah 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 anyways so we're going to start creating our scene uh if you noticed i haven't imported any assets i haven't imported even on the onward stuff yet because we're not going to worry about that right now uh the onward stuff is sort of an end thing uh most part i'd recommend creating a plane most people they'll take assets and they'll try and create paneled maps um, just just start with a plane, something that you can put stuff down on, um, scale it up to 10 by 10, and that's a pretty small map. And I'll show you once we get some uh, asset packs in here. Because we'll have some interesting helper assets, that'll be the player model size, and that'll help us you know, determine scale and all that jazz. So, we've got our plane, nothing interesting there, but we want to make sure it's static. And we want to make sure light map statics on. That's because we want to make sure that this plane gets its lighting baked. Anytime you have a real time lighting situation, um, except in some texture situations where it's not really putting out light, uh, 
you you can you want to have your lighting baked. Uh, the only time you're never going to have your lighting baked is when you go to your directional light, which is up here. You click on it, it'll point it over here. Go to your directional light, and you see it's mixed. You want this to be mixed lighting because then it'll produce the baked lighting you need from you know basically a sun-like object in the sky, and then it'll also light your characters the ammo boxes, basically the onward stuff, because that's actually lit by real time. I don't know, it's a little strange. Uh, elevators are a whole different conversation, which honestly you should just DM me about them. But uh, you want this to be mixed. That's the only time you ever want it to be mixed. So now I think we're on to the point where we can start bringing in assets. You go to the asset store. And you see there's just, you know, the front page. Sometimes there's some good stuff. I like to go to hidden gems because sometimes you, you find some hidden gems. And, of course, always click on sale only. Uh, but we're going to go. Yep, that's my name. Uh, we're going to go to basically all the asset packs I have. Um, we'll show by view results by 100. And you just scroll down uh, everything you think you'll need. Try not to import too much because then it becomes a little bit of a, you know, a mess in your projects folder just try and import you know a few things nothing crazy here we'll import this package uh, there is a free version of this that I think everyone's sort of seen in a few maps that has the uh, the hangers the industrial sort of stuff um, I know I used it on the island and airstrip uh, I've seen it on a few other maps uh, Lipinski's map I've seen it on it's, it's a nice little popular pack it's got roads it's got uh, just neat little buildings that are efficient and basically if you want to go in and buy packs from what is it Dimitri Kosinko yeah a little a little plug there he's got some good stuff uh, you can make some pretty nice city maps that aren't too resource heavy with what he's got um, so you're just gonna sit and wait and import I think we're gonna probably take a little bit of a break here if this takes too long because I know there's some other packs that I would like to import like Sun Temple and the big one, the bakery, which is what I've been hinting at this whole time. Uh, the bakery is a very, very nice tool. Uh, there used to be a sale for a half off the bakery, which was nice. It was only $25, and now it's full price, and you can do the math on that. But it is worth doing if you plan on making, or worth getting, if you plan on making a few of these. So, yeah. We're just going to take a break, and I will talk about the asset packs I imported afterwards and what we need to do to make sure, if, like, say you have an error. We will go through all that. All right, and we're back. And the first thing you're going to notice is we have a ton of asset packs here. I imported Sun Temple, RPG, uh, industrial and urban assets. Uh, the industrial's free. The urban, I think you need to pay some money. But it's definitely worth it. He's got some good stuff in there, especially for if you're trying to aim for a quest style map or just a lower resource style map so it loads faster, you know, performs well. Uh, a car pack that has the little hatchbacks and sedans. Uh, Flaming Sands is just sandbags. The bakery is the big one, which we'll talk about when we get to lighting, but it is. The bakery is what I'd consider something worth buying if you're thinking about doing this. But like I said, we'll go and talk about that later when we're actually going to start baking lighting. Um, and then, of course, Moodware is just a few skyboxes. Um, free stuff. Uh, I think I can show you a few right now. Uh, that's the maps. That's not... Where is it? There they are. So you throw them up in the default skybox. There they are. And you see it's a little grayish and weird, and it's like, why is that? And it's because you have color set and the ambient colors up there. And there you go. It's light lit this up. And, of course, we can throw up other skyboxes if we want and see, yeah. Yeah, just whatever you want, whatever works. And I know they're like, oh, that doesn't look that great. But trust me, you can, you can put up walls, and from the player's perspective, they won't see that. They'll just see... The nice beautiful clouds and that's really all you want to see is some nice volumetric clouds that aren't really volumetric all right first things we're going to do is we're going to go to the plane open up our materials you'll see it's got a mesh collider not really ideal if it's going to stay a, a plane you should really put a box collider there so just 
just go in here, put in a box, and I mean it's it's a plane, which is essentially a box with no sides. So, boom, it works, and it's a nice. It this is called a primitive, and they generally use less resources than a mesh collider, but don't be one of those people that fears mesh colliders. You're going to be needing them. Uh, we'll go to industrial and just start laying things down. Um, don't be afraid of terrain, but terrain can be a whole different video. Uh, it's a little more difficult than you think it is, but we'll throw down a road. See, it's halfway through. So uh, learning the hotkeys is really nice. It saves you a lot of time. So if you hit shift and control and move it around, it stays on that plane. But we just want it to raise up a little bit, make sure it's not floating too much. It's floating quite a bit, uh, but that's not a bad thing. It's a road. You want it to sort of float, but you'll notice it doesn't have too many sides. So what you can do is just open the prefab. The prefab is essentially a meta version of the asset. Think of it that way, where you can add assets and it will always, whenever you place, say this road set one, it'll come with this cube I just added. So what I will do is just lower that, lower mirror, and just make it thin a little bit, stretch out quite a bit, make sure it's about there. It doesn't have to be 100%. I don't want them to overlap though. That creates something called Z fighting, and that's a bad day. So 20, so. Ooh, that doesn't look too bad actually. Might be a little Z fighting here and there, but. Uh, let's go to 19.95. There we go, a little bit in. We can come back and we can fix this however we want. So we're going to give it a material. Got a whole bunch of little textures here. Uh, some of them work, some of them don't. Like you can even throw the skybox on there, but you can see it doesn't work. It's even a little bit off, which is strange. But sure. I'm uh, just making sure we're recording. Uh, and uh, okay, let's get back to our textures. And so we want to find something simple. Let's go with, let's see. Yeah, let's find spawns of cliffs. Let's see how that looks. A little stretchy. Okay. I mean, we're, we're not looking for anything fancy. There you go, plaster. Um, and then, uh, let's Sun Temple Vertex, and that's a little bit tricky to fix, and we'll talk about shaders in a second. We will go with, seamless, let's go with that, okay. Mobile Diffuse, change it to standard shaders, and now we're gonna talk about them. Basically, you want them standard because there's gonna be an upgrade coming soon, and we're basically gonna have to make a whole new video to talk about it, um, but standards going to be uh, going to allow you to seamlessly upgrade and so basically when 1.8 comes out your map can basically be compatible with 1.8 and you won't have to re-upload your map or figure it out and trust me I've got a little bit of work to do. So you hit here, you go down to tiling to fix all that stretchiness and you see it looks a little bit better. And we're not trying to do anything crazy because the players aren't going to sit here and look at it. We're just trying to cover up that space below the sidewalk just be like oh yeah there's there's a little something something there you know whatever and no one's gonna sit here and study it and if they do well yeah so we just we need two of them to go to the other side so we're gonna hit control C and then control V to copy it no that didn't work hold on control C control V and we copied it too many times and you want to make sure you don't hit V too many times you notice there's a one and a two that means I copied it too many times see, I'm gonna pull it out see it's still there a one it's still there yeah if you hit V too many times you're gonna create a third one and if you forget about it it's gonna create Z fighting and that's when you see the flickering in games where it's like what is that am I gonna get epilepsy am I gonna have a seizure and it's like yeah you probably are stop looking at it so here we are we've created the road and as you can see we now have sides on it it's not pretty and we can go back and change it but that's just sort of a little tutorial of how you can sort of fix gaps like that and all we need to do at this point is now since we have a road set we're going to move it into props and we're going to hit control c and control v and there we go we got a whole road we're not going to make it anything competitive here we're just going through the simple stuff and once you do that you can select both of them holding control 
and then hit control C control V and now you're pulling out two of them and this just sort of makes your job easier when you have to make like whole road sections so you're not sitting here copying panels on panels on panels and anything using panels basically just this is this is your bread and butter and you notice there's a little space there a little space there it's not perfect but you, you can fix it later in editing but it's a road you're not gonna be sitting there looking at it and we're probably gonna cover up half of it so we want this in the middle of the map so we're gonna select all of them while holding control slide it back middle of the map now the plane doesn't look too good being white let's try and find something that could work as just a base ground texture or say a concrete texture or asphalt texture just something that the players can believably say like yeah I'm standing on something and so we'll go to this concrete texture and take a look at it and that that's pretty good I mean look at it I, from above it looks pretty good but oh wait we get close up there it is it's all pixeled again how do we fix that first off we change it to standard it's not really part of the fix but uh, make sure this is all set to white unless you really want it to be gray or you can change it to red or any color really but I go to white because I want it to look like concrete uh, make sure the you can make it metallic-y, but it does stuff like that, which is odd. You want a little bit of shine, so put the metallic there. Leave the smoothness. I like to put the smoothness down a little bit because it causes... Uh, what to describe? It's like a fog on the texture. Uh, you've seen it in-game. Um, Bazaar has it in some certain places where it's like, the color's a little bit off there. It doesn't quite look like a building. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it besides showing you, but that's the best I can say. But we're going to fix the tiling, and that hopefully fixed that fog effect I was talking about. And we're gonna just going to select 10 and 10. You kind of want to scale it with the plane you made, and you notice that here it is, it's tiled. The player's going to notice it way less at their level, like you see that, it just looks like... But honestly, let's see what 15 and 15 do, because it is... It is concrete, and they are playing in VR. I mean, from above, it looks it looks like, you know, tessellated, or, um, you know, repeated textures. But from below, it just sort of looks like dirty concrete, and that's really all we're going for. You know, the players aren't going to be studying it, and once they get a drone up in the air and they're looking down, it's... We're not experts. We don't know how to fix that quite yet. Um, one thing you can do to make it a little better on the close-ups is you go down to details, and if it has a detail map, you can bump up the tiling on that. And I can actually show you on something else that has a detail map. These rocks, which you've seen a few times in my maps. Uh, we'll throw down the popular one, this guy. Yep, see, nice standard shader. They're very compatible. We're going to make sure it's static. There's a, I mean, you can, you don't have to sit here and click it every time, especially when you place a new one. What I like to do is throw them into props, and then you can put a mesh render on the props. And just do it all from here. So you watch. Once we click light max static, it'll say change children. And all the children are the roads and the rocks and blah, blah, blah. And we say that. And everything is now light map static. And guess what? It does it for static too. So you can really just ignore that until the end. Just don't forget about it. Don't, like, if you're wondering why is the AI running through my walls and rocks and all this stuff? Why is the nav mesh, you know, not caring about my assets? They're probably not set to static. And that's this thing. So just make sure that's that. This makes sure that it's getting a baked light map without it. Uh, you're going to see an asset that's probably too bright. Uh, you've seen it a few times in the dev maps and custom maps where it's like everything's just kind of shadowed right. And then all of a sudden there's one asset that's just a little bit off or wow, that's really bright. It doesn't look like there's any lights or shadows affecting it. That's because it's not set to light map static. So you want to make sure that's happening. And we have this rock. Uh, I've selected the road too. But anyways. So we go to the rock, we take a look at its shaders. Um, these rocks have some interesting things that you need to worry about. You don't see it in the editor when you get close. You can kind of see it there, actually. See, it's a little bit metallic-y. Well, in VR, once you get really close, it turns into a kaleidoscope and makes you puke. So to fix that, we go to our height map. And guess what? Boom. Gone. If you leave any bit of that height map, it's going to do it. It's going to do that little kaleidoscope thing. So there we go. The rock looks a little simpler, a little lazier, but honestly, it's fine, especially for onward. If you're going to make it bigger, so see, it's already it's stretched out to 1.4. Let's stretch it out to 4. Make a big, big mountain rock. And this is what I like to do, actually, to make mountains. 
see we got a nice big rock it's not going to use too much more resources than the rock that was smaller than it it's an asset so and then we're going to go down to detail tiling because we've pumped it up to four so we're just going to do a sort of amalgam or you know an estimate of um the tiling so nine times let's say you know, three so 27 uh, detailing 27 detailing there you go once you come up you see it's a little bit weirder looking it looks a little different but once you come up close it's actually this texture that you've changed and that once you get up close as a player it it looks a little better it doesn't like you know when you play custom maps or even some of the dev maps or you go up to a rock and it's like you can see the pixelation and you can see the yeah it breaks the immersion a little bit and it's because there probably isn't a detail map on it or they just didn't up it enough um, and I know that doesn't look too amazing but it, for onward and the resource converse, uh, conservation we need to do these these aren't pretty bad and honestly a lot of people love to use these rocks so feel free to steal them they're the rocks in boulder 2 pack um, but rocks are going to be your bread and butter so let's we can leave them out in there um so, and just to make it a little bit different, we're going to go through and have another rock just, just to show you the power of how to make cool looking, I don't know, whatever you want, rocks, cliffs, um, pump it up, just anything. I mean, it's a good boundary, It's it looks good up close, it looks good from afar, and it doesn't have that weird, I don't know, odd... Um, like look, that that looks a little. You can hardly tell that there's two different rocks smashed together there. And I mean, if you take this and you Control C, pull this over here, and then we're just gonna spin it a little bit so no one's looking at the same side at the same time. You can start creating, you know, whole cliff sides. You know, just it doesn't even have to be a full spin. Just bump that. And I know it, it kind of looks like that, but. It, it looks better than trying to do it with terrain and there's there's other tools you can use within the asset store that we can talk about but this is a good basic way to make cliffs i've used it i mean i still left it in my maps even though you know there's like i said there's better tools to use but we won't get into that we'll just leave that there for now um we'll select them all kind of just get them out of the way that's our side of our map barrier um one one thing to do that i i personally love to do is see, I'm just going to storm that out if we're going to make a barrier of rocks sit there, copy all of them uh, what am I not selecting here I want all my rocks yeah, that's because they're not there and there we go, okay just copy them pull them oh wait, we now have another side of rocks and it the players aren't really going to notice because you're looking at a completely different face of the rocks. And I know this is sort of bad design because you really want this side to not have any textures on it, especially if you're trying to conserve resources. But for PC VR, you can get away with quite a bit, and this is me being lazy. So I'm going to show you the lazy way to make rocks. And to be honest, these rocks aren't too resource heavy. Um, so there you go. We've got two sides of our map nice and easy we can even throw on four sides if we want and there you go you're stuck in a rock hole so we're gonna throw down some buildings mm, this is the industrial set we'll take a look at hangar two throw it down there and we're just gonna use a few buildings nothing crazy because that's how you that's how you conserve resources you know you throw down a few a few buildings here and there and you try and try and find a way to make that work or believable because in real life you have multiple buildings you have multiple cars that look exactly the same as each other so don't feel like you need to have each and every little thing to be unique you know it's a unique little snowflake building like no they, if you've got a barn throw down some extra barns if you got see this Arabic building is actually really cool I like it a lot you know we're there you go we've got three buildings we're gonna make a map out of these three buildings and of course a few other assets but I think we're just gonna throw that there copy it with a control C and control V see our rocks are in the way so we just pull them back a little bit nothing crazy and that's how you make the rocks a little more unique from each side 
There you go. It almost looks like a whole rock face that you know doesn't have these bulging bits that you can tell. So we're just gonna spin that a little bit. And spin that a little bit that way. And oh my god, would you look at that? Oh, those look exactly the same. Let's fix that. Boom. There you go. Now this is just basic map making. We're not going to go into Pro Builder. We're not going to go into uh, texture compression or anything like that. This is just throwing down stuff, getting a light bake, getting the onward stuff together. You know, just the important stuff. Now, if you see something called Animator and you didn't make it, get rid of it. Because you don't need any stray uh, animations going on. Even if they're not doing anything, they're probably going to be using resources, and that's never a fun day. So we're just going to make sure all of this is set. Now, I do notice that these buildings are bigger than these. So one thing you do need to do, which eventually we're going to have to fix in, is use Sun Temple. Hem Sun Temple's helpers. Uh, there's a few fix we're going to have to go through, but we're just going to have to throw these down. And that's basically the size of a player. It's about 1.8 meters high in-game. And if you move it around and compare it to this doorway, oh my god, that doorway is massive. So, you always want to check whether the map or the asset you used is within scale, because it will bother players. I know it's like, oh, come on, just deal with it. It's like, no, they're not. Uh, so we're just going to sit here, go to the prefab level, because the prefab level is how you change every instances instance of this asset. So you don't have to sit here and go around, say you have a billion cars. You don't have to go to every car. You can go to the prefab and do a universal change. We're going to put it down to 0.8. And we want the ceilings with the floors. Okay, we'll keep them all. Um, but we want to make sure that they are standard. So. Oh, it does turn dark, so you need to go in and turn that up. Alright. Boom. Nothing crazy there. Now, how are we going to make a map out of these three buildings? Well, easy. We're going to copy that. Bring it over here. Turn it. Oh, let's turn it just a simple 90 degrees. This is beginner level stuff. I mean, you can do stuff a lot more complex, but you don't have to bring a, bit, a ton of buildings to the show to figure out how to make a map. I mean, it just has to be somewhat unique in its layout. And there you go. You got. Let's see, let's pull that back a little bit, and then we're going to do this, we're going to give it a 90 degree twist, let's see, let's make sure it's not hitting anything, make sure it's on the ground, that's another thing, make sure it's on the ground, um, shift tab is good for that, see, it just stays on the ground, just make sure it's level there, all right. So there we go, let's move that over there, and I don't think we can fit any more buildings into here, alright, so we're going to leave that that way. So we're going to take a look at our helper model again, delete him, place him down, oh, well that looks a little better. <coughs> we're going to be a little lazy and not scale the rest of the building, but it'd probably be smart to scale the rest of the building down to 0.8. But for space reasons, we're just going to leave it. It's fine. So we're going to move the road. Off the map a little bit. Make sure that it's just... We do that just to make sure that the players have no chance of seeing the end of the road. And you'll see why in a second. Because we're just going to block it off in a really lazy way. But it's just... You need to find some sort of thematic way to do it. Let's put it that way. You don't just want to have a lazy, like, oh, yeah, we're in some sort of void fighting, blah, 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 blah. Like, have have some sort of story with everything you place, even if it's a simple one. 
Like this doesn't look too bad. That looks a little too far over to get a car in. So there we go. We'll move that over. I mean, it looks like a pretty simple, I don't know, industrial garage area in the middle of a canyon with a nice bright blue sky out. So, you know, nothing complex. You can obviously come up with something much more detailed and we're just trying to make a nice quick video. So we're going to close it all in. And you may wonder, why am I using the same rocks all the time? I had a, I had a ton of rocks down there. Why didn't I just pick some more? And the, the answer is, the more rocks you add, the more... Oh, I hit the wrong cow key. The more rocks you have... Oh, didn't do it. The more different rocks you have, the bigger the map's going to be, and the longer the download size is going to be, or download time is going to be. And we all know how much players love to complain about the custom maps taking too long to download. So, honestly, efficiency is the name of the game. You want your map played, make sure it's not 800 giga or megabytes. All right, so there we go. We've got a little simple map there. I guess we'll cover up this bigger area by pulling the rocks in a little bit. All right. And we'll just keep continuing pulling the rocks in. Mm. There we go. We're just continuing to seal off the level in a believable way. I mean, it's a giant rock cliff. You can say this is a government facility or, I don't know, a secret town. Uh, whatever. Whatever works your boat. Um, just something that the players can mildly get into. Nothing, you don't have to write an essay on, you know, the Siege of Kosovo. You just need to make a story. All right, and how are we gonna seal this off? Let's pull this back a little bit real quick. There you go. Well, simple. We're gonna create a cube. Cubes are your best friend. Uh, we're gonna make it, no, oh, wrong way. One deep. 50 by 30, just something high enough for the players can't see over. Uh, my rule of thumb is generally if you're going to put a wall like this down, make it basically if the highest point, if not the highest point the drone could ever go. So we're going to put that there and we're going to slide it over and just use the same one. And we'll figure something out there. And we're just going to copy both of them and slide them all down. Nice and easy. Nothing, nothing cray cray. We're not going to put too much detail on this map, but for the most part, that's going to be it. Here, we want a little bit. We want a path back there. So, remember, I'll always try and think about player movement and how they might go or might try and use something because uh, they're devious motherfuckers they're, they're devious pardon my French so they will figure out ways to get out of your map and break your map and make it unfair for the other team so just be on your toes try and lock them into the space so we're just going to put on a default material we can put on what is it? Spawns a different. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, a little big. So we'll go into here. It's a nice, simple, standard texture. Not even doesn't even have normal maps. Just something nice and easy for the beginners. So we're just gonna tile it up to ten and ten and then, there you go. That's not too terrible, although it is super noticeable. So go back, hit five and five. Well, that looks a little more believable, doesn't it? Let's try and go up to it as a player. I mean, well, maybe we should make it a little less tall. So let's go with 20. You see how it's showing there? So you want to sort of cover that up. And there you go. Nice and easy. Now to cover up that last way, we'll just go into Sun Temple, pick up something easy and. You know, I think I have a map coming out that's probably going to use the same exact thing. Uh, 
And I guess if you haven't picked it up by now, I'm trying to emphasize that you really need to use assets that aesthetically go together. Because as, as, as soon as you start using something that, you know, looks like it's from the future, you need to start making a future, a map from the future. Um, if you're going to start now, if, if you're gonna just start throwing things down, and you have a let's say a sp <laughs> a spaceship, and then it's full of like dumpsters and pallets, it's like, well, okay, I think we're thematically confused at this point. Or if you're gonna have, you know, just a base, and then all of a sudden there's, you know, just random stuff strewn around, there needs to be purpose to it. There needs to be a reason, and. Uh, so just always try and think of the story of your map, whether there's going to be something going on, and just, you know, make it look decent. Um, try and try and decorate it. Make it look pretty. I mean, this this map, I, we've been making it for maybe five, ten minutes, and it, 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 thematically it looks decent together. It's not the prettiest map in the world, but there you go. We used three different buildings, uh, two, four cubes, this... Uh, I don't know what to call it, I guess, curved door thing that we've just blown up to a billion. And here we go, we gotta change it to standard. And it'll change this the shader um, universally throughout. So basically, this is, I guess, an entry level tutorial of what you need to do to get into making onward maps. Because right now, this is perfectly fine for an onward map. The, Colliders exist. Um, everything's got objects. The one thing I haven't imported yet is the onward custom content, and we're going to go through that in a little bit. But now that we've sort of got the general layout down, and we've made sure that everything has their colliders. Yep, everything's got their colliders. Good, good. Um, let's go through and throw down some, you know, just a little detail, nothing crazy. Hatchback and sedan. Then we go to prefabs. I'll we'll throw down the hatchback because I, I don't use it too much and see it's a standard shader. It's got an animation on it, so remove that. We don't need it. And we're just going to throw a few down. Just nothing insane. Just throw down a few because we're, we're just placing them to use them. We're not trying to throw one or two down in a specific spot right now. And see, we're going to take these four, copy them, pull them over. Create a second set and rotate them by 180 degrees in relation to its R it. It's starting degree angle, so it's at 90, so we need to go to negative 90, and there you go. They've turned around. All of them have turned around. Now, if you want to turn them around in a line, I hold control, go to rotation while holding control, spin. And there you go. You can do it in a, a set interval. So basically, do, 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 do. There you go. Alright, so we've got some hatchbacks. We're just going to throw them around in places that we think people might want some cover. So, generally, places where crossing is going to happen. So, boom, 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 boom. We can, since we've got two cars there already, we can pull this one over to the side, turn it a little bit, make it look like the guy pulled off to the side of the road because something was going on. Same with this guy. Just Oh, an event happened here. Oh my god. Alright, and then we've got a hatchback down here. We've got a hatchback over there. So it's, we've got a little more cover. Not too bad. Now, that's not a lot of cover. So we're going to probably take a few more hatchbacks. Copy. Nope. But guess what we're going to do with all these? We're going to put them in different spots. So this one's going to be parked there. We're going to see he's going to be driving along. So what do we want this guy to do? He's going to be driving along and uh, he's going to, well, let's say he tried to turn down here. Like, oh, what? Something's happening. Let me try and turn them down this alley. And, you know, just give him some sort of story. Oh, what happened to you, sir? I hit the wrong rotation. So yes, always go through and make sure. These should all be at zero, zero. 
and we'll ignore the fact that it's going through the road halfway, but or the the, the uh, sidewalk halfway. We can fix that in detail, which is, is something you just do on your own. Um, I do recommend going through all your maps that you made and fixing them in detail. We'll put a cluster of three cars here. Uh, this guy's pulled off to the side, but not like the others. He's going to be just short of... Boom. There we go. I'd say that's enough cars. Now, what you want to do is generally go through the prefab and just see what's what, whether you have something you don't need. And right now, these cars use one solid collider using that mesh for the body and whatnot. And you can go through and delete that collider and fix all this to be whatever you want. But honestly, this is probably the most efficient way to run these kind of cars, especially if you're trying to run a few of them. Otherwise, you really want to limit your car usage to maybe, you know, 5 to 10 at most. If you're going to have specific glass to, you know, body kind of colliders. Just another resource thing. It, I mean, you can obviously play with that if you want. I mean, all this stuff is subject to you. If you want to try and do something different, go for it. But uh, best practices and all that. And last thing we're going to do is just throw down some sandbags. So we want this to look like something is here. So, oh wait, would you look at that? The collider's a box. We don't want that. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna go to make, give it a mesh collider. And it's basically gonna follow the mesh, which is sandbag one up here. Or not sandbag one, where is it? The mesh is plain. But yeah, it's called plain, but it's essentially the sandbags without color and it's just the mesh. Anyways. Um, so we're going to make sure it's on the ground. Let me see. What I do is I always try and sink them a little bit because the way, the way I think of it is even with sandbags, there's going to be gravity. And if you put a sandbag on concrete, some of it's going to flatten out somewhere and it's going to be at the bottom. So boom. it's like, oh, we've got some good sandbags. So another thing we want to do right, while we're placing cover, let's go to our helpers and take a look at how big it is compared to players. And I mean, that's that's pretty good. Um, about waist height, a little lower. Uh, not too bad, but sometimes a player wants a little more than that. So we're going to create one with a little bit of stacked, and we're going to come up. And we're just going to see how we can make this look. Generally offset them a little bit. Just enough. Yeah, see? And there you go. I mean, that doesn't look too bad. You can kind of tell that it's just two of them stacked together, but it's a nice, fast, and loose way to get a good solid full cover set going. And it doesn't look too bad. Um, I don't think anyone should really poo poo it. I mean, there's obviously better ways to do it, but for five minutes, you can just sit here and copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And uh, now, one problem is, is we do have a barn there and we need the cars to come out, so there we go. Now that we can do that. Since it's small cover, you want to give them a little bit more of an advantage. So what I do is I give them that so they have a full V, where these guys only have side cover. Uh, so other things we can do. So now that we've got cover facing all ways, we can just start copy and pasting everywhere we go. Well, that's not too bad. Just try and make something that looks natural. Um, I know the urge to just throw it down and be done with it kind of gets there, especially when you get tired. But uh, just natural cover. Think about suburbia. Think about quarantine. Basically all the dev maps. That's what people are used to. That's what people want in Onward. As much as some of us may disagree with that. Um, we've been trained to play those maps and we've been trained to play onward that way in those ways so at some point you've got to go with the flow and sort of bend your map to that so we're just going to throw down a little bit of cover here and there not too much though a lot of onward isn't cover based anymore like there isn't a lot of cover think of quarantine where there's just large and large 
portions of territory where there's just nothing. Nothing for the player to even hide behind. A lot of, like, think of the dooms. Think of getting down plus plane wing. Think of running behind roof. I mean, if you just get caught out, there's no cover there. You got... You've got the garbage truck, and you've got, you know, there's not much to work with. So think of that in your map. You don't really need to give, you don't need to baby the, the players by saying, hey, we're going to give you all the cover in the world. Now, you notice I just corrected a mistake right there in two seconds that uh, moving it back and forth back on the train should have required me to um, zoom in. Now, control Z is your friend. It's undo. It's going to undo any action you did, including selection. So, like, um, let's say I unselected that and selected that. I can hit Control Z and we're back to it. So, let's say you select a ton of things, like all these cars. I'm just going to select a few specific cars. And then, whoops, I selected the wrong thing. Control Z. And we're back to it. Just a little quality of life thing so you're not sitting there reselecting a billion things that you know, you've been trying to select. All right. So, not an amazing map, but we threw down some cover. Uh, that's pretty barren back there so easy way for players to do this or map, ma map makers is just take a few things you've already made copy paste because if it's on the other side of the map it's technically you know not the same thing anymore now let's see it's 18 or 19 so one of them's in there boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna go down a little bit more I'm going to pull one of those off, just because it's a little much over there. Prop it up against the wall. Because if you notice, if you get down in player view, those look a little strange stacked up out in the, out in the world. Um, so, we're just going to pull this in to thin that out. And give a little more bottlenecky of a lane. Because, think of it this way, as these are the back lanes, this is the main routes. I mean, obviously it's not an onward map, it's not big enough, but... sake of theory, here we are. All right, so we have a map. There's stuff, but you got a little bit of a messy hierarchy, so that's why I sort of put it all in blanks, um, or just one big mega ca meta category of props, because then we can just throw it all in there. You know, like when you're cleaning your room, you're just throwing it in your closet. Here we are cleaning our hi hierarchy, and we're just throwing it in props. Make sure you're not throwing it at into the point where stuff's becoming children of prefabs, but that's a different conversation. So then we have our scene stuff, we have our props. Okay, now time, it's time to start uh, start talking about the bakery. Uh, the bakery is this really, really, really cool. We'll look at it up the asset store. There it is, fifty-five dollars. I know, punch in the gut. Uh, really cool asset. It basically, if you use the Unity light mapper, you're probably in for, on average, 8 to 24 hour bakes that will probably break half the time. Not fun. So, we use the bakery. Um, really cool tool. So, did I import it already? That is a great question. Oh, I don't think I did. Import. So we're going to import it. It's going to take a little bit, but it is worth explaining, especially in this video. See, we're just going to bring it all in. It's going to ask whether you have made a backup, and we are going to click yes when it pops up. Now I know someone's probably been looking at this error the whole time, and we don't have to worry about it until we start saving and putting the light bake in and honestly we should have been saving this whole time it is best practice to be saving all the time but since this is a quick one that i'm probably gonna <laughs> not turn in uh we're just gonna get right to the edge of publishing hmm appears we are having an issue with the bakery now there should be well, I guess we got to correct that error now, and that's what's causing the bakery not to work. All right, that's fine. So we're going to go to this error. Uh, it's basically saying min attribute is an ambiguous reference between Unity 
and this. Uh, it's basically saying there's two references. You need to be using this because it's a concatenate and it'll reference both of them. So we're just going to click this and we're going to open up Visual Studio 2017. Uh, I know most people don't have Visual Studio 2017, but you probably should. It's really worth getting, especially when you run into... St nah. Uh, just annoying problems like this that literally are copy and paste. You see right now I'm just copying and pasting. There it is. Uh, we're going to go up, we're going to save all, and we're just going to exit and it's going to... There it is. It's going. And of course it's going to just go through everything and depending on how long this takes we might take a break here. Actually we are going to take a break. It's, it's going to go through all the assets I imported and fix them all with that fix I made. So, I'm going to take a little break. Alright, back. Um, see, the error is fixed. That's not an error we need to worry about. And there you go. Okay, we've got the bakery up again. Okay, so, uh, once you import the bakery and fix all your errors that matter, I know which ones matter. Just, I guess we should talk about that in, the, in Discord. But um, we have the bakery. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do once you go to your scene is create a skylight. It doesn't have to really do much, just uh, we can leave the sky, skybox up. We're going to put it in the scene. Now your directional light, it's mixed. I generally, especially for maps like this, I like to whiten it out. Um, I know it doesn't makes sense your sky is blue with a little bit of cloud cover why don't you have a little bit of blue reflection but honestly blue light is not what's coming through the atmosphere um, so especially during the day it's more of a white light and the only reason we see blue is well we don't need to have a conversation about uh, <laughs> the atmosphere but anyways you, I like white lights they look better but you can always style it up other people do different things but you want to put a bakery direct light on this. You're gonna for all the lights you attach, you're gonna to need to attach bakery scripts. And don't worry about onward. I know it said it doesn't like scripts, but this is for baking. The script can exist for baking and not exist for onward because once the light's baked, it's not using the script anymore. If there's any confusion, DM me and we'll talk. But all right, so we've got a directional light. It's got its bakery direct light set to mix. It's got its color, its intensity is 1, its indirect multiplier is 1. For now we can leave that because we're just going to try and see what we get with the bake. Uh, first thing we do is we make sure everything is static, so click no, just this object only, and then yes for children to get it all static. And then we're going to do the same for this. Make sure everything is light map static. And we are going to save this scene as to Tutorial scene. And we are going to click render light map and bring up the bakery tab. I like to put it here, but you can put it wherever. Uh, we're going to click switch project to linear lighting. Onward custom content will do this too, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. It'll go through and fix everything. So the bakery is a good thing to have because it'll actually do one of the longer parts of the onward import for you. So we're just going to wait for this to be done. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. If, if I recall, the bakery is actually pretty fast about it. There we go. Yep, The bakery is really, really good. All right, so we're going to go through, go to experimental. Got a shadow mask, directional mode dominant. Uh, I like to put it on, well, we'll leave it on L1, see what we get. Legacy hasn't caused me issues yet. I've played with it. Not entirely sure what it does. Uh, if you want more info on what it does, ask Koi's. Uh, Denoise, just make sure all this is selected. Uh, you can go through and play with it, but I, I've been getting good results with all of it. Um, and then, of course, UV padding. Uh, max resolution 4k actually put that down to 2k min resolution we want 2k and we want the tile size to be 4k that seems to produce relatively good looking light maps 
that aren't very big. Um, and especially for Quest, it's kind of needed. Uh, RTX mode, that's if you have an RTX card, click that and it'll hopefully bake pretty well for you. I've had a few crashes on my other computer that's got an RTX card using it, but for the most part it works pretty well. It'll speed up the bake considerably if it does work. Uh, export terrain trees, if you've got trees that you've painted on the terrain, not placed, painted, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't done it, um, that'll export them and then it'll actually bake a light map onto them. So that's that's pretty cool. If you don't select it, then the light map from them won't exist and won't be created and you don't have to worry about it. And then of course, click these. There's no terrain on this map, so we don't even have to click that. Legacy Denoiser. Uh, it's just a good backup. I have it clicked. It doesn't seem to bother anything. Um, still learning about the bakery, so but these are the settings that I have that seem to be working pretty well. Uh, go into lighting. Just make sure you have enlightened settings. Uh, just I'm not entirely sure how this translates to the bakery yet. Koi's obviously has more information on that, and we'll do a better video explaining it once we do get more clarity on it. But um, for the most part, I try and match them just so there's no confusion in my head. And then we just click render. We use default. Now this is just the first bake. There's probably going to be a ton of things wrong with it. It's probably going to go pretty quick, mind you. <coughs> this isn't a very... <coughs> oh. This isn't a very big map. There's not a lot of stuff to bake, and all the buildings we have are really efficient. Yeah, you see it's flying through this and that's part part of it is the power of the bakery the the bakery is getting a free promo here but basically i mean it, this would take 30 to 45 minutes if i use the unity light mapper and this is going to take maybe a minute or two with the bakery uh, it's worth spending the money if you're going to make one or two maps or more than two maps sorry wrong turn of phrase but we just finished we just finished baking lighting now obviously there's some things wrong now you look there's not really not really a light map there z zero zero oh wait there's one there it is now oh well when we come in there's there's something there but when you zoom out nothing okay what's going on here well let's start taking a look at our assets it's light map static Let's go in a little deeper. Oh, light map static. Take a look at this. Look at our skybox the resolution's fine. Everything's fine. Take a look at our directional light. Make sure everything is there. Oh, there's our problem. The bake direct light is indirect only. You don't need to go through that here since this is a beginner video, but you want this on direct and indirect. That's our problem. All right, so take a look at our skylight just to make sure. And there it is, direct and indirect. Sometimes this doesn't show up until you do your first bake. So that's sort of why I just sort of ran it through and didn't even bother with it. So now we're gonna render again and we're gonna see what we get. It should produce a light map. If not, I've done something horribly wrong and you can shame me. So we're just going to wait for it to happen or finish and just let it go. I mean, you can hit cancel at this point. I do not suggest hitting cancel when it's exporting because it's literally pulling things from your map into whatever the bakery does. And I've certainly lost a map. Thankfully, I had backups, but I've certainly lost a map that way or a scene that way where I lost in the export. Half of it is some, some weird repository, and there it is. We now have shadows. So, that's half our map basically done right now. See, you come in, the shadows don't disappear. Uh, it looks like we've got a little bit of seam there. That's off, but we, let's go in and fix that. It's not really the biggest deal in the world, so we don't really have to do a rebake. No, we don't. There we go. Now, what I just used there is a hotkey called Shift V. It's exactly what it, um, you know, the name is on the tin. You go to movement mode when you click on an asset, you hit Shift V, and it'll go into this, and you see it goes down to every little corner. 
and what I like to do is come up to the corners and I mean if we click this corner and did it and you see that but it's overlapping in game that would produce Z fighting so we take those and we just move that there now obviously we go to each and every one and make sure that they aren't doing the same thing when we're done we just hit shift V and look we're back to normal movement mode uh, we could do a rebake but honestly the movement really wasn't worth it and it's not going to change anything so now that we've got everything let's just say we've got everything on the map we want this is a completed map obviously it's not this is a pretty bare bones thing and no one really wants to play something like this um, the fight will happen in two seconds and no one will like that but for the purposes of learning this is great so we're going to hit occlusion bake and while we're doing that we can hit nav bake this is going to be for your AI and for your players so they don't um, basically so the map's not being rendered all at the same time um, if there's a car or a building that's behind another building it's going to be you know it's not going to be rendered and you're going to be saving resources you want that now you noticed how the nav mesh goes around all of this stuff uh, I'm trying to see if maybe I forgot something that's not static to show you, but I guess not. What what, what did I do there? Uh, zero. Zero. There we go. Alright, now you notice the cars are like, why, why did they shadow like that? The back of it looks good, the, the front of it looks pretty decent, it kind of cuts there, and then the, the door is just like, whoa. Um, probably, my best guess is the FBX doesn't have you uh, generate UV set up oh, there it is we found the import settings for the hatchback 1988 and they don't so we're gonna hit that generate UV light maps or generate light map UVs let's read the right words and apply well, that's a little better but to really fix the issue you're gonna have to go back and do a rebake let's see if that completely fixes it uh, sometimes the re like there really is no fixing it unless you go in and take the asset to blender or pro builder and honestly that kind of comes down to a <laughs> cost benefit relation you know analysis relationship where it's just like is this worth doing you know it it's, are the players really going to be bothered by a shadow that's slightly off you're doing this for free mind you uh, obviously make good looking maps don't you know don't just kick the can down the curb and turn it in. Obviously make something pretty, but there are, there are some things where it's just like, it's not really worth fixing before publish. I mean, if you want to try and fix it after publish, go for it. Uh, I've certainly done revisions, but there you go. Would you look at that? That looks actually way, way better now that we've generated UVs for that map. Obviously we have a little bit of artifacting there, uh, but for the most part, this is pretty good. And, um, and if you notice, if you've ever been looking in the custom map channels and seen some of our complaints, there is a little pixelation, but it's not too bad. But with the settings we have, there's none of those weird colored artifacts. So if you've been paying attention to the custom maps channel, it's been a thing. Uh, now I'm not a big fan of these bricks being the way they are. So we're just going to do a little change up. Where's curbs? I love curbs. Do I have curbs? Yes, I do. Curbs is a really great texture. It's just a standard sort of simple texture that has a detail map. So you can sit here and bump it up to a billion. Now well, let's bump it up to 20. And it looks good up close. And then when you tile it, oh, look at that. See, like it doesn't look weird. It looks like someone actually, like, Oh yeah, someone built a wall out of concrete. There you go. Oh, this is a pretty boring looking map with strange looking big doors. Let's just... Oh, there we go. Now it's just a gate. Uh, but that does look strange. That does look strange. We'll just keep it like that. We'll ignore the giant doors that people don't use in real life. But anyway, so now we can go around our map. This is a nav mesh. This is what the AI is going to be traveling on. They generally listen to this as opposed to colliders. Uh, if anyone's confused on that issue, they will follow the blue anywhere it goes. So let's say this here, we'll actually, we'll do this in practice. We'll turn the static off on this door 
Yeah, let's change the children and we'll rebake the nat mesh. Oh, would you look at that? That little space that was there disappeared and it goes all the way through. Well, basically what would happen if we tried to play a hunter evac game is the AI could walk right on through there. They would just ignore the fact that there's a door. So that's, that's static. That's what static does. And that's why you really, really need to make sure what is and is not static. Some things you really don't want to be static, like I've used force fields in some maps and holograms in some maps, and that you, you don't want static. I mean, it doesn't make sense that a force field, well, a force field in some instances will stop people, but or most instances will stop people. But uh, you get what I'm saying. Like, there's some there's some instances where you want people to walk through something, or it's like water would be a good example if you could create a waterfall. That's something you really wouldn't want to be static for multiple reasons, and one of them is walking through it. Okay, so we don't have the onward stuff, but we're basically at that point to go get it. Uh, what I do is we go to custom map info up here in the pins. We go to the custom content documents. Go down to the package. Download the package or, well, let's see. I think I just open it at this point because it'll automatically import to Unity and technically you've downloaded at this point. You don't drag and drop. You open and you see import settings immediately pop up and this is the onward stuff. You see you see mention, onward being mentioned multiple times. There's gun game, free roam, escort. All this is being pulled in and this is all the stuff that uh, allows your game to work with onward. So don't muck with it. Don't play with it. Don't go into C and be like, oh, I can make this better. You're not, because you're just going to break your map. And the devs will probably hate you. So I'll click import. And this will take a little bit of time. Project settings. Port one is single pass instance. There you go. And virtual reality enabled too. That there's there would have been a third one that basically said set it to linear, and then we would have gone through that whole process. But honestly, the bakery already did it, and the bakery does it better. Nothing against whoever made the onward content, but yeah, that's where we're at right now. Uh, and so it just skipped that whole part and that part if the onward custom content does it It'll probably take an hour, especially if you've already started pl placing stuff. So Not great. Now you notice we have a few more errors Those are fun, so we're just gonna save exit out of the game or unity not the game and We're just gonna bring unity back up um, now you might wonder, what, what am I doing? Why did I just turn off Unity? There's a ton of errors I needed to fix. Well, we are. We're fixing them. Oh, would you look at that? The errors didn't show up. And we've got Onward content. So I, I know people see a lot of that stuff. And they're like, oh, what's going on? My map's broke, dude. It's like, no, it's not. Just, just restart Unity. Sometimes Unity likes to tear up and, you know, pee on the curtain sometimes for no reason. And there we are. So, what I like to do just to start off, check scene for errors. And this is the requirements to get your map to do a local upload and then publish. Now, mind you, I would make sure your map is relatively bug-free and relatively finalized. Obviously, there's some wiggle room on that. If... Uh, the devs haven't okayed your map and you've published already you can put as many updates as you want out um, if you if you ask the devs nicely when they say oh your map's released and you say hey I have one more update all I'm changing is you know something insignificant like lighting or you know a few major bugs that was found then yeah they'll probably let you do an upload on the release day but that's that's a whole different conversation. But for the most part, you want to make sure your map's finalized and try and upload only on Wednesdays for updates. Final word on that. Anyways, so these are the stuff I'm missing. Some of the stuff's pretty easy. So 
So we're just going to throw a tent. See, that's the tent. It's, I suspect, another scene created, and then it's a scene within a scene. Um, so we're just going to put it over here. You want it far enough away that you're not hearing the gunshots every time someone's, you know, shooting. Because you know how onward it is. The sound can travel forever now. So just make sure that's not too close. You don't want it under the map. And I've noticed a few map makers have done that where they've just thrown thrown the tent under the map and it's like I can hear people walking and talking and shooting and that's mad annoying when you're trying to plan. So just avoid that. Another thing we need is a damage volume. It's this red plane. You can scale it to any size you want. You can Nope, you can't tilt it. You can't move it. But there's really no need to. It's a uh, plane that basically when a player impacts it, they will die. So if they somehow make it through your level's floor, they will hit it and die and go to the tent instead of falling forever. And we all know how fun it is to fall in VR. <laughs> nice little tickle in the belly. Now this is your map quad. This produces the map on the tablet and on the board for um, planning. So try and scale it to just be in the bounds of your map. It can be a little bigger, but for the most part, you don't want it stretched out too big. Like say you made a map that's like this tiny little play area, but it's got this nice big vista around it. Don't include the vista in the map quad. Just include the map because this is for planning purposes. This is for looking at the tablet and realizing, oh, this is what's around that corner obstacle-wise, or this is where my teammates are. If you make it too big, it'll turn into a pixelated mess and everyone will hate you. So there's that, and we're going to go through, since it's not a big map, we're going to actually make it a little smaller. Or actually, we want that to be 100. We want the height to be 50. And then just lower that... There we go. There we go. So the map quad's in. Throw a level descriptor in. You want to turn off the reverb, because right now the reverb is ear, ear hell. You want to stay away from urban, because the ammo crates have some weird occlusion issues in that one. So I just put industrial. I mean, it's not really industrial. Lord knows what this is. It's a bunch of buildings in between rocks and walls. Um... But that's pretty much it. You really don't want to do too much. It's a small map, but I don't know what that affects. And of course, time of day, just be honest about that. I don't think they affect too much. Now, we're not going to go into stuff like ammo reverb or uh, area reverb or anything like that, because honestly, I don't think it's, it's something you really shouldn't be adding. Oh, we're just going to throw down some ammo boxes. Uh, just make sure it's in the floor because, as you can see, when we throw one down, like that's, it's floating, and you, players will always notice that. So you need at least three. And we're just gonna go with bare minimum. You don't need to be too exact with these. Uh, one thing I would do is just make sure they're facing the right way. Usually, if see that little area there, that's that means it's facing the right way. And then once you have them facing the right way, you just grab them and move them that way. I mean, honestly, ammo boxes to me, they're sort of a chore to just put in. Because I, I don't use them in Hunt in EVAC. I usually just steal guns and, I don't know, them being a required thing. It's like, ah, all right, if you want it, I'll do it. Alright, so we're going to start on, we're, we're not going to go through all the game modes, we're just going to go through uplink and free, mo free, uh, free roam, just because this is an intro video and that's basically how we're going to get, uh, I guess we'll go through some of the AI modes, but um, we'll throw down four spawns, now you notice they're in an arrow formation. That's basically the way they're going to be aiming when they spawn in, or looking. So with these two bottom ones, go to their hierarchy. And let's find... Alright. Well, we'll just... 180. Alright. 
And always make sure that these aren't inside walls, because players will very much spawn inside those walls and then not be able to do anything. And they are not happy when that happens. So we got four spawns down. Let's go to our game modes. Well, now that we've got some onward stuff though, let's start cleaning up our hierarchy so we don't just have a ton of stuff. Throw it into onward. You can get a little more specific with this. Um, smaller maps, I just get a little lazy and just throw it all in onward, but bigger maps, yeah, you gotta be organized. So first thing you do is throw in free roam. Defending team spawns, there's four spawns. So for free roam, we're just gonna have four. Now we probably should label these besides spawn system one, two, three, and zero. So that we don't get confused. So spawn system. So these two middle ones. These are gonna be spawn system dash one A dash one B spawn system dash two A and spawn system dash two B. There we go. Now we sort of Get our sides down, you see the bees on this side. See. Oh, I got my bees wrong. See, this is why you label them and you double check. So this is going to be 2B. You can't have the same name, so you gotta start juggling these now. Uh, This one's 2A. 2A, 2B. Ah, I messed up my system already. <laughs> Alright. So this is going to be 1B. There you go. Fixed. Okay. Okay. You see the B's. Or the 2's. On one side. The 1's are on another side. And they're basically split into quadrants. Okay. So, back to game mode free roam. These don't have to be in any order. Because it's free roam. It's just going to pop you into one randomly. Sometimes it seems to break and keeps putting you at the same spawn I I don't know how to fix that got to talk to the devs about it but here we are so we're just gonna put in uplink which is the one that matters and that everyone cares about see we have no objectives placed already but we do have the game mode so we're just gonna move on There's, say one objective there One objective there. Just do two objectives. Alright. So defending team spawns, attacking team spawns. There's always going to be one defending team spawn. You can't ever randomize those up. Or we only want two. Okay. So once again, we're going to find 2B. Go to uplink one. So two B is going to be our defending spawn. While our attacking spawns, I believe, are gonna be the one A's. Or the A's. Yeah. Yep, the A's. So go back to uplink one. Same thing with this one, except we're probably going to be using these. So let's just double check. Always double check. As much as you think you know what you're doing, I mean, you just saw me mess up a little bit. So 1A is going to be our defending spawn. So 
So we're going to use 2B and 1B. Yep, the Bs. And I mean, really no order matters. I mean, one of them will be first pick, but it doesn't matter. So there we go. We've got our uplink set. And we'll just move this into onward. Now, one thing we are missing, we need to go to the game mode uplink. And since we have two of them, we're going to connect that to that. Or the uh, uplink objectives to the game mode. So that it can actually pick them and see them and know that they're there. And there we go. Now, let's see. We'll check scene for errors. Oh, would you look at that? No errors have been found. We can actually go and test this map on onward right now. We can spawn in. We can shoot things. Uh, we're obviously missing a few things. Uh, an important one is a set physics. Something you don't want to forget about is this, is a set physics or material. Basically, you want to make it, I mean, you can make it any material, but basically it'll determine whether bullets can go through it or not. And so, I mean, obviously some important stuff, if you want it to sound like you're shooting metal, so go through make it up metal and penetrable but for these it defaults to concrete so you don't even have to bother with them it's it i mean it's a stone building so why worry um let's see was it this one i just switched up to nope this one's got some stuff to do always go through make sure it's at the standard fix the light That physics material, there it is. Make it metal and penetrable. Make sure it's all set to light map static. Even within the prefab, if you see it, do it. To be honest, I don't. Eh, I don't know. There's a bit of shadows on it. At least it's not producing. Oh well, no, it did. So it, it was light map static. Anyways. Uh, so the cars. If, um, obviously there's other cars you can use but just go to the collider and with a little more work we can make the glass and the windows glass but for now we can just what I like to do is make these metal and especially for these cars since in real life the engine block is the only real bulletproof part of a car you take a cube you create a simple engine block throw it in there it's got its own box collider doesn't have to be set to light map static I mean you can if you want to cover your bases make sure it's set to static and give it metal unpenetrable while the collider has metal so basically you're gonna be able to shoot through these cars but with a damage reduction but then when it hits the this cube I placed in there it'll act like a real engine block where it stops the bullet it's not an exact thing but it's simple enough and works well enough that it keeps the immersion live. I actually think this is a better way to do cars than just blanket. Oh yeah, the body's invulnerable and the windows aren't. It's like, no, that's that's not real life either. So there we go. We've got 90% of a map. All we're missing is AI. So you need to put something called AI support on the map. And we're going to go up and close our props. Make sure this goes into onwards and see we've got a navigation manager. So we're going to go here and just start adding paths. So this is going to be used in addition to our nav mesh to help the AI travel. If you don't do this, the AI is essentially just going to stand still on the map until you shoot. And then it will start reacting to you. But in my experience, it won't do much else. Uh, they, they will get pretty creative about killing you though so I don't know um, interesting I, I assume that's the cover manager going off the cover manager is a mystical source of I have no idea interesting interesting issues but I assume it's what designated that as a choke point even though it's not because I certainly didn't do it you didn't see me open anything up to do that but it does stuff like that, and the AI will make its own decisions. It's an adult. So we're just going to go through and create paths for the AI to move about. I mean, you don't have to be specific. The AI, as long as you've baked your nav mesh and it's not going through anything like we, like we showed, 
Like, as long as it's not going through that door we showed. The AI will follow these paths as best to their ability, but will not go, you know, they won't go through stuff to get, use these paths. It's more of suggestions of like, hey, you know, if you, if you want to, if you don't have anything better to do, you can go this way. Think of it that way. I mean, the devs obviously know it more, and I'm, my explanation's probably wrong. So, mm -hmm, Mr. Death, you want to chime in? Give us... Give us some answers on that that front. We'd always love them, but anyways. So we're just going to put some intersections. They give the AI a little more uh, spontaneous reactions once they get to those points. You generally want to put them in places where there's a lot of connections, but sometimes you just... There you go. The connections don't happen. So there we go. Got enough to uh, for the AI to work. So we're going to come over here, save the nav map. Now we're going to... Oh, we could have just clicked save screen and nav map. Okay. And so, you can, I mean, Overwatch, that's if you want to put snipers on your map. But honestly, the AI are laser beams enough with their guns. I just don't even bother with snipers. Uh, you'll see in a little bit basically how I do it. Is we're just going to start placing some AI spawn points. You don't have to connect these to anything. You don't have to connect them to the AI hunt or evac game modes. You just throw them down. Generally, what I do is I try and not throw them on top of spawns. You know, throw them around corners. Throw them... Throw them in places where the AI is not immediately going to jump a spawned player. So the player actually has a little bit of movement. Or a little bit of movement options they can use. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, I know what I did. AI yeah, support still exists, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay, so we have enough. You, you can put down as many. So you need to designate them as hunt. What I do is I usually go every other one. Make them an assault squad because everyone loves their LMGs, especially picking them up. Honestly, it, the evac modes kind of feel like looting in RPG modes. But there we go. And we just copy it. I generally leave them in the same place and just set it to evac. Don't set anything else. Don't bother with it. Select them. Throw them in. And there we go. I think the only thing we are missing is the objectives and the game modes for, this, for the uh, evac and hunt game modes. So we're just going to throw in the game modes. And then we are going to throw in an objective evac, which, if you've ever played evac, is a giant helicopter to come get you. Or pick you up, but in... Uh, the custom map version, the helicopter's not going to land. I mean, I, I understand why they did it that way. You, you How are you going to anticipate a, a helicopter landing in a terrain you don't even know exists? You know, I understand why it's just going to hover there. So, don't worry about the helicopter never landing. It won't. Uh, you only need one objective for hunt because all you're doing is killing people. So, you just go through and connect some spawns. I generally just use the ones I created for Uplink because, you know, they're probably the better, more thought out ones. Hunt and Evac. They're nothing crazy. You just go through and do this. This is probably the tedious part, especially when you have like 16 spawns. Oh, you're going to be sitting here doing a lot of clicking. So that's why I only did four. Obviously, you can, you know, truncate some of them. Here we are, we're doing the, up. the objectives. You can, you know, say you have an objective evac and you have a billion uplink spawns. You, you only really need to use, like, three or four of them. You don't need to use all 16 for hunt and evac. No one's going to be that specific on hunt and evac. Uplink, yeah, sure, get a little variable with it. We all know why we need that. But, anyways, so we're just going through and finishing this up. I mean, you essentially just saw a whole map get made. I mean, there's some maps in the custom in the workshop right now that are smaller than this. So, all right. So, once we're done with that, let's throw all this into the onward. Always keep your hierarchy clean. It just, it just, it's easier on the eyes. It's easier on the brain, and it looks better. It's way, way easier to navigate and organize. And, 
deal with so just make sure you're cleaning your hierarchy and organizing it well i mean even this i'd say is probably pretty loose because this is just a bunch of stuff in props all right so go up to onward always check your scene for errors no errors have been found so go up to onward well, we'll do the dashboard first so hmm well let me log in. All right, I've logged in. This is the onward dashboard for your map. Make a title, we'll call this, we'll call it hatchback. Description. Um, bulk. Um, just make something up. Volk fight mark fights marks up. Or hatchbacks. Now you may wonder, I don't have a thumbnail. How do I create a thumbnail? Well, you go into your scene, grab your main camera that we haven't touched in a long time, and just start moving it around. If you have a VR headset connected to it. Uh, when you click play, it may not be the same exact angle, and that's because your VR headset isn't looking at the right angle, if that makes any sense. Um, if you just disconnect your VR headset, the uh, main camera will look the angle it's looking. I've, I've been confused by it a few times, but generally not too bad. See, I have a VR headset connected, and oh, would you look at that? It's looking at the wrong angle. So we're going to take my index headset, and we're just going to turn it one way not too bad as you can see the map's actually pretty good 81 batches uh, 535k tries 624k verts nothing not, not too not too bad pretty good map there well, let's see if we can make this tilt less, uh, less annoying that's why you generally don't want to do this with a VR headset. But anyways, we'll just take the picture. It doesn't matter. So this is us in game mode. So we just go to snipping tool. And we're just going to take a picture. Save as. Hatchback. Dash pick. Save it. Now we're going to go into our pictures. We're going to add it with Paint 3D. Now everyone with Windows 10 should have these because I know for a fact I didn't install them. This is something that comes standard with Windows 10. Snipping tool. Um, canvas. Or, um, paint 3d all of it all of its standard so there's no there's no excuses for a poor picture all right so we're gonna save this change it from pick to tab save now I do recommend going through the onward guide because I'm not using this the onward guide. This is just me making a map um, out of you know just just doing it. I've read the onward guide a few months ago. I probably need to read it again because it's been a while and they've definitely updated it. But for the most part, I haven't had any issues. I'm just doing what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to import a new asset. We're going to import that new picture we made. So we're going to scroll down to hatchback and see all these wonderful pictures I have. There it is, hatchback tab. And we've got to log back in again because it's got a pretty quick logout time. Or it'll auto log you out. And so we just take this, throw it up there, and there we go. We got a picture. Now, I'm not going to submit this because this, this isn't an onward map. Like This is a the terrible game to play um <laughs> but um 
we'll do everything but. If you want to publish, you hit that, and it'll just run. Uh, I usually start at 1.0. People like to start at 0 0.01 or 0.1 for their versions. It's whatever you want to do. Just keep it consistent. So when you do do an update on Wednesdays, you update that, and then when you do the custom, and you know, so you actually have a patch notes and a patch display version to put down. Um, so basically with this, you could do a full publish. And if you look, these are all my items. And that's basically what they're going to look like once they're up. See, I have that one just, I haven't done anything to it. It's at 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And then these are at 1.2 because they actually got updates after being published. And there's just some stuff here that hasn't been released yet. And so this is basically what they're going to look at. You can sort of go through, you can edit these, you can edit the, um, the names, you can edit the descriptions to edit the, t the pictures and the actual map. You're going to have to do another publish or update. So that's kind of onerous, but it's what it is. Uh, we're just going to go to the launcher and we're going to build it and we're going to see how big this map is. And once we build it, we can go into Onward, and if you go to, say, Free Roam, or if you set up Hunt or Evac, you'll be able to find it in the map selection screen, and single player, under a map called Unity Export. And that'll actually be the local version of this map, because you're not publishing it, you're not pushing it live. No one else will be able to see that. Um, I know there's an effort to try and create a third-party distribution service for local maps but I don't know tell me how that's going. Uh, but for the most part, you're not going to be able to test multiplayer. Uh, in my opinion, you're not going to be able to test multiplayer. So just try and do local tests as best you can. Uh, do, you know, Hunt or Evac are really good setups to just sort of figure out whether something plays well, whether something's too small. Just, it's the best you're going to get until you publish. So this is the whole process of uploading, or uploading on local, and uh, we will pull up. Now you do notice it's complaining about the cover manager missing. It doesn't matter. As much as the devs want you to put cover in your scene, it doesn't. Don't worry about it. All right, so we are going to go to onward. Users. Because we want to take a look at how big this map is once we do the final, or get it finally uploaded. As you can see right now, my current local build is 403 kilobytes. And that's from one of the other maps. And we're actually almost done with the upload. And we'll pull that up once it's done. Oh, see, there it is. <laughs> it's about done. There it is. Uh, bigger maps will obviously take a lot longer than this. I've had some maps take up to 30 minutes for local uploads. And Oh, we don't, wow, would you look at that? 60 kilobytes. That's Or 60,000 kilobytes. That's 60 megabytes. Most maps aren't even under the 200 to 300 megabyte range. So uh, the packs I used in here are pretty good. They're pretty efficient. Um, obviously, if you use terrain, you're going to start running into more issues. Uh, there's a few things I obviously haven't gone over yet, like invisible walls, which we can do right now. Because we only need one. See, it's this little yellow cube void thing. And what we're going to do is make that a hundo. Make that a hundo. And we're just going to make sure that the players cannot escape. Yep, see, there you go. Between the rocks and the walls. No one's getting above this, and see, it's set to block player. There's nothing else to set it to, so basically it'll stop the drone, it'll stop players, it'll stop everything. So, nice and easy. Quick map. Um, and we could go in and test it right now. We could go play this and onward if we wanted to right now. No questions asked. Um, this is Snooper Facts. If, if you have any questions... Uh, I'm not going to get into escort and assault modes because I, I don't personally am not a fan of them as game modes. And if you need help setting them up, the guide does a great job of that. So, like I said, if you have any questions, certainly DM me. 
Uh, but this is my little tutorial video. It's pretty slapdash, pretty rough, and we'll certainly get a better one up. But for the most part, this is how you make an onward map. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. There's a few subtle nuances I probably didn't get into, but honestly, I think if you run into them, hit us up on the custom maps channel. We will certainly work to try and fix those issues for you because as you can see, I just started from zero and went to ostensibly 100% in less than an hour, no, no problems. The bake went fine, uh, setting up the game modes went fine. Uh, baking the nav mesh went fine occlusions baked fine uh, so yeah um, that's my tutorial it's pretty pretty broad stroke so if you have any questions please ask bye